What's up everyone? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. It's pretty clear from what you see on social media that the vast majority of tanks out there are shot under the most blue lights possible to really accentuate the fluorescence of coral. To the point where you practically need orange filters and stuff like that to not completely overload the image sensor of most cameras. There's no doubt that it's very popular, but it's really not a look that's for everyone. There are plenty of folks out there that are really into the daylight look. So this list is a list of corals for those hobbyists that are looking for stuff that's going to be the most flattering under those lighting conditions. Because the reality is, not every coral fluoresces. And a lot of the aesthetics of corals isn't just their color when they're glowing, it's their shape. It's their movement, things like that. And in some cases, the only way to get some of like the really nice coloration is to view it in daylight because a lot of these corals, they don't fluoresce. All right, let's hop right in. The first coral that I'll talk about are some of the leather corals, in particular, big toadstool leather corals. When I first got into this hobby, I loved these things just because of their shape and their incredible size. I don't know why, but I get this like weird bonsai tree feel from it. I saw a really cool tank once that had one giant, giant toadstool that must have been a good seven, eight inches across. Its stem was every bit of six, seven inches. And as a sole giant leather in this tank, it was a dramatic statement piece. And underneath it, they had a ton of different types of mushrooms, Discosoma specifically. Leather corals are super easy to keep, and you can get into some interesting colored varieties. For example, there is a yellow Fiji sarcophyte in elegance that is canary yellow if you give it bright enough light. But it really doesn't look yellow if you put it under actinic. It's kind of a, a greenish tint, but under daylight, it is canary highlighter yellow. It's one of the prettiest corals out there, but it's only that pretty in daylight. Next up. Let's talk about gorgonians, specifically the photosynthetic gorgonians that you see in the Atlantic. One of the coolest things in aquariums that you typically don't see a lot of is a forest of gorgonians. These are sea fans. And just to put in a nice, slow-moving, back-and-forth current in the water, they're super elegant, they're super beautiful, and a lot of their coloration and the subtlety of their coloration can't really be seen in actinic lighting. If you were to blast these things with just all blue lights, they basically look black. They're completely devoid of anything color-wise. But the real selling point of these guys is going to be their shape, and their movement, and they do have color variation, but again, it's going to be only daylight visible. There are some that are more tan colored, some of them that are purple colored, and if you wanted to get really kind of experimental, there are non-photosynthetic varieties from the Pacific that are all the colors of the rainbow, and again, those colors of the rainbow don't fluoresce, so it's all daylight. Moving on. These corals do fluoresce. These are elegance corals. Now, I think that this is kind of a tweener because I happen to think that they also look pretty good in a tank with heavy fluorescence. A lot of them have very exotic colored tips. That's kind of like the differentiating thing with these guys is that sometimes they've got like purple tips, pink tips, and the really desirable have either yellow tips or red tips. Red tips are really, really rare. Now, why do I put them on this list? It's because I like how the body of it looks under daylight better than under actinic. The body has this striping to it, and sometimes under more daylight colored lighting, a lot of like this shimmer effect happens on that striping on the body. You can, I suppose, get a little bit of that in actinic, but I see it more in daylight. So this is kind of a tweener, like I said, but Elegance Corals makes the list. Next coral, pulsing xenia. This is one of those corals that's highly polarizing. I happen to think that they're one of the coolest corals in the hobby, hands down, period, end of story. If you were to take a huge colony of pulsing xenia and have that in, let's say, an SPS tank full of the highest end SPS you can possibly imagine, and you brought somebody in off the street, I guarantee you 
they are going to be way more impressed by pulsing Xenia than by the fuzzy sticks. Just saying. I love their movement. I don't exactly love their insane growth rate when things go well, but the independent pulsing motion of these polyps is amazing. And under actinic, a lot of their appearance just kind of gets muted for some reason. And perhaps that's what you might want. Maybe you want this background that's kind of subtle and in an actinic tank, you'll be seeing a lot more of the fluorescence of other corals, but having this kind of this moving backdrop, that's kind of cool. But if you wanted just to focus on the Xenia by itself, no question, it's going to look better under daylight. They might even pulse better under daylight. Delving into the SPS world, we have yellow parietes, kind of uncommon these days. Parietes are one of the few corals that are really, really yellow. I mentioned that toadstool leather before. This is another one on that list. The cool thing about yellow parietes is that when you blast it with a lot of light, they do develop this very, very, very yellow color. But that yellow color doesn't fluoresce, and you can only really see it under very bright daylights. The ideal situation for these guys would probably be under a 10,000 Kelvin metal halide, something to that effect, because they really are one of the coolest SPS that almost nobody has. They're unfortunately slow growing, and perhaps that might be in part because we're not providing it the kind of lighting that it likes. Tough to say. Staying with SPS, I'll talk about what we call a rainbow stylophora. These guys typically have like a multicolored base and a more purplish pink tips on the growth edges of each branch. They look like absolute nothing under actinic. They're practically invisible because every single part of them essentially looks like it's in shadow. A constant shadow, no color whatsoever, no fluorescence. But in daylight, in this case I mean daylight quite literally, they look like they're glowing in daylight. You can even take this coral out of the water and it is bright, bright pink at the tips. It's one of the cooler corals to have out in the greenhouse, for example, where there is plenty of daylight in the summertime. A lot of that, unfortunately, is lost in the home aquarium. This is one of those rare instances where a coral in the wild would probably be far, far nicer looking color-wise than a coral in your tank. I first noticed these guys in the greenhouse when it was time to close up and we would turn off all the lights. I was just like looking around at all the tanks with no lights on whatsoever. It's still daylight out because, you know, we close up at about 4.30. There's just still plenty of daylight in the summertime. But I'm just looking in, into one of these tanks. It looks like the lights were still on because of how bright these guys were. Very underrated coral. The rainbow stylos. There's going to be a yellow theme to this entire list, I have a feeling. <laughs> the next coral on this list is yellow polyps. If you have a soft coral aquarium and you're looking to introduce yellow, this is like the, the least expensive, easiest to care for option out there. They are a perizoanthus, typically a little on the aggressive side, so you kind of have to like worry about placement and stuff. If you provide it relatively low light, they will turn a mustard color. If you provide it with high light, the polyps themselves become smaller, but develop a canary yellow color. You kind of have to like play that little slider of, you know, how big do I want the polyps versus how bright do I want those polyps. Anyhow, in actinic, as most things on this list, they don't really look like much of anything. In fact, they almost look like a grayish green, which is bizarre because it's not really a fluorescence. It's just kind of maybe their skin cast in blue light. But in order to see those bright, wonderful yellows, gotta be daylight only. The last coral on this list that I'm going to mention is a sun coral. These guys are the non-photosynthetic tabastria. So you might want to check out our video all about tabastria for care tips because they're going to be one of the most challenging corals to upkeep. The short synopsis of it is you need to feed the heck out of them. Way more than you might even think. I mean, some people might be like, oh yeah, I feed my, my tank a couple times a day. It's like, no, 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 no. You need to feed these things their entire body weight in shrimp multiple times a day practically. Like the more you can feed them, the better. And that comes with its own set of challenges. As far as their appearance, they can be a little bit frustrating in the sense that they are kind of nocturnal and it takes months to kind of train them to come out during the daytime when you're around and also to accept food. So that kind of goes back into the feeding issue. As far as the aesthetics go, this coral only shines, pun intended, 
under daylight. There's no fluorescence to these polyps at all, but if you are able to provide some degree of daylight, you're rewarded with one of the most bright yellow corals in the hobby, and possibly the most aesthetically pleasing polyp. I don't know what it is, but I just find Tabastri to be one of the most aesthetically pleasing corals when it comes to just like the shape of every single polyp. Last thing I'm going to throw onto this list, and that is not a coral, are Tridacna clams. Technically not coral, guys, but when it comes to how to appreciate the appearance of clams, no question. Daylight, 100%. Their appearance is going to be more a function of the angle that you view their mantles at. The appearance of a clam is going to be vastly different looking at it from the side versus looking at it from the top. There really should be a blog out there that shows the difference of angles. So maybe the, like, um, somebody could do a thing directly at 90 degrees through the glass. Maybe they have a specialized tank with a 45 degree pane, shoot it at 45 degrees, and then top down through the water. Because the coloration is so different that it might be difficult to, to identify which clam is even which clam based on the photos. If we took a picture of like six different clams at these different angles and said match them up, it's very, very difficult because they completely can change palette. They can completely change pattern on you. It's wild. But going back to the lighting thing, a lot of that color and pattern comes out with daylight specifically because kind of in the same way that I mentioned about elegance, there's like this almost like a shimmery look to it. And that typically gets drowned out in actinic lighting. Okay, guys, that does it for my list of daylight corals. Are there any on your list that I did not mention? If so, please feel free to toss it into the comments below. That does it from here. Until next time, happy reefing.